Now that we have started using picture stimuli, we should take a few minutes to explain some aspects of picture stimulus timing, which will become apparent as we start to look at the data. Begin with a scenario that attempts to display a few pictures of very short duration. We use a trial so we can precisely control the timing. The trial contains four stimulus events with requested times of 0, 1, 2 and 3 milliseconds relative to the start of the trial. We also set the event code stimulus event property for each event by defining the code SDL parameter. Setting this property will cause information about the stimulus event to appear in the scenario report. The value of the event code property may be any string. Before running, we also select the Always Show Report setting on the General panel of the Settings tab. This will display the scenario report window after the scenario completes. In the Code column, we see the values we assign to the event code property for each stimulus event. The Time column shows the event times relative to the start of the scenario. The Trial Time column shows the times relative to the trial start time. Because the scenario start time and trial start times are somewhat arbitrarily defined, the absolute values of these data should never be used during analysis. Only time differences between logged events should be used. However, the trial times are useful in evaluating the performance of a scenario relative to requested times. Looking at the trial times and also the durations, we see that our stimuli were approximately 16.7 milliseconds apart instead of the one millisecond we requested. These results are due to the nature of display hardware. Your computer's graphics hardware transmits graphic data for the entire screen to the display device at a fixed frequency called the refresh rate. A common refresh rate is 60 Hz, or 60 frames per second. We use the word frame to mean the graphic data describing what's on the entire screen. We will call the inverse of the refresh rate the refresh period. For hardware running at a refresh rate of 60 Hz, 60 complete frames of data will be sent to the display device every second, or one every 16.7 milliseconds. This happens whether or not anything is actually changing on the screen. If nothing is changing, the hardware just sends identical data every refresh period. In particular, it is not the case that data is only sent when something changes. Although we requested our stimuli be displayed for one millisecond, this is not possible because the display can only be updated once every refresh period. Instead, presentation did the closest thing possible, which is to display each picture for one refresh. Therefore, the log durations of the stimuli reflect the refresh period. The durations here of 16.7 milliseconds indicate that my display is running at 60 Hz. Since the graphics hardware is always sending frames, this defines a restricted set of times at which the display can be updated. That is, the duration of any visual stimulus is limited to some multiple of the refresh period. For example, suppose we request the second stimulus at 40 milliseconds. You may have noticed that the first picture in the trial was given a trial time of zero. This is simply because presentation will base the trial start time on the actual time of the first stimulus in the trial. Even the first stimulus may be delayed depending on where the graphics hardware is in its refresh cycle when presentation attempts to start the trial. Further, we see that the second picture didn't appear until around 50 milliseconds. When presentation presents a visual stimulus, it waits until the requested time and then displays the stimulus as soon as possible after that. Since picture 1 defined trial time 0, trial time 40 milliseconds was in the middle of a refresh period. The second picture was displayed at the next possible time of 50 milliseconds, which is three refresh periods after picture 1 appeared. The third picture was requested at 80 milliseconds, but was displayed at about 83.3 milliseconds, which is five refresh periods after picture one. When an experiment depends on very precise reporting of visual stimulus times, further issues must be addressed. The stimulus time reported by presentation is the time that transmission of the data for the first frame containing the stimulus started. 
What happens after that depends on the display device being used. In the old days of CRTs, this refresh start time corresponded within a fraction of a millisecond to the CRT scan beam starting to draw the first row at the top of the monitor. With modern displays, when the display pixels are updated relative to when the frame data starts to be transmitted, it's highly dependent on the display. In general, there may be some delay between the logged stimulus time and when changes started to be reflected on the display. This is usually called the display lag. In addition, it can take additional time for pixels to transition to a new colour value. This is usually called the response time. Unfortunately, there is nothing that software can do to detect or report these types of delays. If this type of precision is required, display hardware must be tested empirically with photosensors to determine the display's timing characteristics. We mentioned that presentation will try to display a visual stimulus as soon as possible after the requested time. For implementation reasons, if a requested time occurs near the end of a refresh period, presentation may not be able to display on the next refresh, leading to a delay longer than one refresh period. Therefore, when scheduling a very short duration stimulus, you should not use the predicted duration accounting for refresh periods for the requested duration as you may miss the refresh you intend to use. Instead, you should use the time after the previous refresh starts but sufficiently ahead of the desired refresh. A convenient rule of thumb is to just subtract about half a refresh period or more from what you want. For example, suppose we want to display three stimuli for three refresh periods each. Since I'm running at 60 Hz, that's about 50 milliseconds each. Half of the refresh period is about 8 milliseconds. Therefore, using 42 milliseconds for the second picture will guarantee a three refresh period duration for picture one. Following the same approach for 6 and 9 refresh periods, we obtain 92 and 142 for the requested times of the subsequent pictures. Running this, we see that the first three pictures indeed have the requested duration of three refresh periods each. For this type of situation, presentation provides another timing parameter called delta t. When you define the delta t parameter, instead of time, you are requesting an interval after the actual time of the previous stimulus event. This allows you to easily set the duration of the previous stimulus regardless of what time it occurs. In the current example, we can make the first three pictures three refresh periods in duration by simply using a delta t of 42, which is simpler than defining the specific requested times. For more details on the various timing parameters available for stimulus events, see the picture time and control section of the documentation. In addition, when the timing of stimuli across trials is important, the timing parameters and behaviour of trials also becomes relevant. You can also review the Picture Stimulus Timing tutorial in the documentation for another review of this material.